there, Andrew Bulpin here, Head of Process Solutions. And today I'm joined by three of my colleagues, Darren Valenden, Matthias Buserius, and Angela Myers. Welcome. And today we're going to be talking about trends in the biopharma world in 2021. And that is both in the traditional modalities and the novel modalities. So, Matthias, let's start with you. In your world, two exciting modalities, novel modalities, ADCs, where out of the nine approved ADCs on the market today, five have been approved during the last 12 months, and mRNA, that people have probably never heard of a few months ago, and now with the COVID-19 vaccines, it's front page news. So where are these two modalities going in 2021? Let's start with ADC, Andrew. So I feel with all the focus on COVID-related topics, 2021 will really see an emphasis again on, on ADCs and the science around it. The market, as you mentioned, is evolving very, very rapidly. We have nine molecules now on the market. Five were approved just recently in the past 12 months. We have over 100, 100 constructs in clinical development. And despite the pandemic, these trends really have con continued. Talking about trends for 2021, we'll likely see a continuation of um, outsourcing of ADCs manufacturing to CDMOs like us. And then as an example, how we um, respond to this trend, we recently announced an investment of almost 60 million into our medicine facility to um, manufacture increasingly uh, potent compound. Another trend we foresee for 2021 is really evolution of the manufacturing processes. As we see more commercial approvals, there will be, need, there will be a need to template uh, manufacturing processes and the raw materials around it. This is something we are already heavily working on um, with uh, our clients, and we're looking to strengthen uh, this further, further along. So we will definitely remain excited uh, about ADCs uh, also, also next years. Now let's shift gears to the second part of your questions, messenger RNA or mRNA. Due to COVID, mRNA has emerged as a promising modality and could become one of the breakthrough technologies of this uh, century, definitely. We do see a very strong uptake of mRNA development programs, about 43% more programs in development um, since a year ago. And the majority of those programs actually go beyond COVID and focus on other infectious diseases and also oncology. And we expect this evolution to continue in 2021. And talking about the time ahead, we can expect that uh, lipid nanoparticles or LNP will continue to be the most widely used delivery system for mRNA therapeutics. And over the past 10 years, we've built extensive expertise in providing those critical components needed to formulate and manufacture mRNA therapeutics. This includes custom lipids and also off-the-shelf products like synthetic cholesterol. Another trend we would foresee for mRNA is around supply chains. Today, many steps of the mRNA manufacturing processes are outsourced to CMOs like ours. And we see an increasing demand from our clients to simplify those supply chains so that ultimately uh, pharma companies have to work with a fewer set of CDMOs. And this is very well in line with our approach to be um, active in multiple steps of the mRNA process flow. So definitely two very exciting modalities um, with very strong trends in 2021. Back to you, Andrew. Clear, and thank you, Matthias. You know, I think from my side, ADCs, and you start thinking about bispecific maps, that you could have multiple targets on the same therapeutic. I think that's got huge potential. And uh, with messenger RNA, just the precision of the uh, technology um, makes it so rapid to develop. And that was very, very clear in the COVID-19 vaccines, how those uh, vaccines have been developed far quicker than even the traditional approaches. Angela. Let's move over to you now. So gene therapies, and that's both sort of viral and cellular, really changing medicine from treatments to cures in certain cases. So it's now proven that the science works, the science is good. However, we're at that stage in its life cycle 
where we have to look at the manufacturing and the scale up. What do you see on those fronts in 2021 for viral and gene therapy? Thank you, Andrew. Before I comment on the manufacturing front, the science continues and is very exciting. Even just this week, uh, there have been news uh, from companies advancing their allogeneic therapies, which are off-the-shelf therapies that are not just targeting one patient, but more broadly, many patients. Um, there are clinical trial results coming out, um, and pharma companies like Bayer just announced a few investments, partnerships, to set up their cell and gene therapy platform. So both on the science and on the funding and investment side, um, the, the industry continues to progress. But back to the manufacturing topic for, you know, let's start with viral vector. And this area continues to focus on improving yield and scalability and also standardizing production. We launched Virus Express back in September. This is a producer cell line for lentivirus that enables large scale manufacturing. And in a short period of time since our launch, we have very interested customers and they are asking for lentivirus, they are asking for uh, even AAV. So there is a lot of interest in this uh, space and still a lot of room for improvements in every unit operation in viral vector production, moving towards more scalable production in suspension bioreactors and reducing the loss in the downstream steps. And then eventually using these templates, introducing it into our Carlsbad uh, contract manufacturing business. On the cellular side, uh, on, uh, in cell therapy, the industry is looking to reduce the time and complexity in the entire manufacturing process, starting with the collection of patient sample through to the selecting of the cells, making a gene, gene transfer, growing the cells, and harvesting, injecting the cells back into the patient. So any solutions that are automated reduce human manipulation, increasing standardization are really highly sought, sought after, and we will see more offerings come up in this, in this area, addressing you know, all or parts of that uh, uh, workflow. Our customers are already testing our solutions. They might be in clinical development right now, but they are very open to testing early stage prototypes. It really gives you a feel of how exciting and, and how, um, how much demand there is for fit for purpose technologies. We'll be launching our research version of the cell harvest uh, module next year to be very closely followed by the GMP version. So more excitement in this field and definitely a lot of unmet need for us to fill. Great, thank you, Angela. Yeah, I think um, one of the challenges that I see is that on these cellular therapies, which are autologous, so basically one therapy for one patient, the raw material actually comes from the patient, you know, their T cells. And, you know, these poor patients are incredibly sick. Um, they've probably had sort of uh, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, two or three different uh, areas of sort of drug treatment, such that by the time they take that uh, uh, phoresis of the T cells, um, the quality of the T cells is, is not the best. And so having a really gentle and efficient process to get the most out of the patient's T cells is critical. And I think that's where something like our um, flow design sonic technology using um, acoustic technology, acoustic waves as a gentle separation methodology is going to be super cool in the future. So uh, exciting times ahead. Looking forward to the progress that we see there. OK, so Darren, turning over to you now. Um, and looking more at the traditional modalities, things like monoclonal antibodies, and really the impact of digital. Um, so in terms of software and automation, what are your predictions about what 2021 holds for us? Well, first off, Andrew, bioprocessing is all in for software and automation. And you shouldn't ask me about what are my predictions, because honestly, with the launch of our platforms of ProcessPad and Orchestrator, which happened this year, it's actually enabling our customers to make the predictions and really get into seamless processing where they can have the insights, know the outputs and the outcomes and model them ahead of time. It's all about what our customers are gonna be able to predict uh, in the future. But again, as I said, in 2020, we've launched ProcessPad, which is our web-based platform for the ability to aggregate and collect your data and be able to have easy on-demand access to analyze uh, and see those results. We've also launched Orchestrator, 
which is a part of our Connect, part of the 4C uh, platform, which allows us to uh, give a, a solution to our customers to actually connect unit operations in the plant on the manufacturing floor. So what's really exciting about 2021, and if you, you ask for my insights as to what I predict for the future and uh, what we're gonna see, is that we're gonna see the next release of our process pad technology, which is actually gonna add multivariant capability, which will be able to give our customers, you know, a, the ability to look at, you know, multiple dimensions of data and measure patterns and really look into that predictive uh, landscape ahead. What you're also gonna see next year is the launch of what we call our applications control engine. ACE for short, if you will. And it's really gonna be our ACE to be able to ensure that our customers can actually control those unit operations with a platform that's actually open architecture. Now, what does the open architecture means? It means that it's gonna allow customers to actually connect that into your ecosystem uh, and really live in the landscape of what you've established and what you set and be configurable in that context because the software is actually built on modular capability which will allow us to compartmentalize and use, reuse common elements of the software code uh, to be repetitive uh, across multiple unit operations. The really fantastic uh, innovations that are coming in the Bio4C platform, but it wouldn't be complete without really being able to offer our customers uh, what we call a customer success opportunity. Now COVID in, in these 2020 times have really given us a unique ability to leverage with our existing software customers uh, a real hyper care about how do we actually implement the software? How do we ensure that it works uh, correctly? Uh, and some of these key customers are leveraging these technologies today uh, and really allowing us to differentiate with the service that we can bring uh, in this customer landscape of software evolution. So really excited about Bio4C and software automation uh, with the bioprocessing perspective and portfolio moving ahead. Great. Okay. Thank you, Darren. And uh, really impressive to hear how we're going to be leveraging big data and artificial inter intelligence. And then with the reassurance that we have an ace up our sleeve. So uh, looking forward to that. Anyway, guys, that's it for this uh, edition of All In With Bullpin. Thank you to our viewers for joining us. And don't forget to come back next time for another episode of All In With Bullpin. Take care and be safe.